Hey, feeling good, like I should. When in Durku, walk around the neighborhood, feeling blessed. Alrighty, let's jump into day two. This is a uh, second part of negative exponents, lesson 8.2.3. Uh, we're going to start off with a word problem. So Salvador's first questions about negative exponents came from science class where he had learned that the, what are these? Euglenias measured 8 times 10 to the negative second millimeters. Use your understanding of negative exponents to rewrite this in standard form. All right, so how would we go about doing that? Go first of all, go and copy that down. And let's think about this. We're going to break it up into two parts. You got your 8.0 times 10 to the negative second power. So let's go ahead and look in your notes from yesterday. What is the decimal equivalent for 10 to the negative second power? Go ahead, write that down, and then feel free to use your calculator or go ahead and uh, do it by uh, just mental math and multiply 8 times the decimal equivalent of this number and then declare your answer. It'll be in standard form. Just give you a second or two to do that. All right, so we start with, we, there's no real reason to have that as 8.0. We could just write this 8 times 10 to the negative second, which would be the same as 8, and then now take the reciprocal 10 to the second power, which would be 1 one hundredth, which in decimal form is 0 0.01. Now I want you to notice something here. I want you to notice a pattern. Our negative exponent tells you that this is going to be a decimal number, okay? It's going to be less than 1, because 10 to the 0 power, anything to the 0 power would be equal to 1. And so I guess if this was a fraction to the negative, it would reciprocate. Yeah, okay. Forget I was going to say that. It's not always going to be less than 1. But in this case, when they're powers of 10 and your base is a 10, yes, they're always going to be decimal numbers less than 1. So how many decimal places are you expecting to see there? 2, because it's to the negative second power. Okay? I could also tell you two zeros, but half the time students forget to write the 0 in the 1's place as a placeholder. So that wouldn't apply anymore. So I've always just fallen back on the how many total decimal places are there? There's two of them, the powers of 10, so it's 0 0.01. And 8 times 1 is 8, and you're going to have two decimal places, so that's going to result in you getting the answer that this is 800 of a millimeter in length. It's very, very small. Okay. The probability of being struck by lightning in the United States is this number percent. And I can tell you what this number is. Just give me a second. One, two, three, four, five, six decimal places. So it ends in the millionth place. So that is 32 millionths of a percent. While the probability of winning the grand prize in a certain lottery is 6.278 times 10 to the negative 7%. Alrighty, I'm not quite sure what that number would be. We can figure it out. Um, our, our task is to figure out which event is more likely to happen and explain your reasoning. All right, so first thoughts are, if we were to write this, we could change them both to standard form and compare them, or we could change them both to, uh, to uh, blah, 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 the, the scientific notation, and that's what I've chosen to do. So if this is 32 millionths, then we are going to identify what place is the leading non-zero digit in. It is in the fifth decimal place. So we're going to write this as our 3 here, and that becomes 3.2, just like we did it with the bigger numbers that were greater than 1. And then whatever the decimal place is, that's going to be the negative exponent that coincides with your power of 10. So this, by definition, is 3.2 times 10 to the negative fifth percent. And, of course, we've got the other one, which we already knew. So let's now compare our powers of 10. Which one is greater? Is negative 5 greater, or is negative 7 the greater number? And negative 5 is the greater number, because it's not as negative as negative 7. 
So we're not even going to care what our leading factors are. We're just going to compare the powers of 10, and we determine that this is greater than that, which means that you have got a greater likelihood of being hit by lightning than by playing the lottery. So think about that when the lottery gets up to like $400 million and you want to go spend $10 on lottery tickets. I absolutely agree. Go ahead and do that because when else do you ever have a chance to win $400 million by spending 10? That's quite a mark up there. But just understand that the chances of you winning are less likely than you getting struck by lightning. So there you go. It's more like you're just throwing away $10, but someone's got to win, so go ahead and play. If it's $400 million, even if it's 300 go ahead and play. If it's less than that, I'm going to say it's not even worth your time. All right. Now, we are going to compare the sizes of these numbers in scientific notation to whatever they would be in real life. So a list below contains a star river and a type of bacteria. Stars are huge. Bacterias are tiny. Rivers, somewhere in between. So, which one is which? Go ahead and look at each one of these names and look at each one of those numbers in scientific notation and see if you can figure out which one is the biggest, the star, which one is the smallest, the bacteria, and which one is the middle, the river. I'll give you a second to write those down and then declare it. All right. I'm sure you got that right. Let's start with the biggest one. The one with the greatest exponent has to be the biggest one. So that one has to be the star. I don't know. Ada Karenai. Karenai. Ada Karenai. I don't know what that's called. Uh, Staphylococcus. Oh, Staphylococcus something. That's a bacteria. I'm sure of it. Because look, it's got a negative exponent. It's tiny. The only one with a negative exponent. So that has to be the bacteria. And then the one that's in the middle. Uh, 6.3 times 10 to the fifth is going to be like 630,000 meters. Oh, meters, not miles. Okay, that makes me feel a little bit better. It's not wrapping around the earth a bunch of times, but it's meters. So that's a fairly sizable river, and it looks like it's probably a river in China because the Yangtze sounds Chinese. So yes, that is definitely the river. All right. Stoplight problems. This is a kind of problem I like to have students solve on chapter tests. Which of the following numbers are, are correctly written in scientific notation and which ones are not? So your task is to copy down each one of these expressions. Determine which of them are properly written in scientific notation. And the ones that are not properly written in scientific notation, you need to put them back or change them, I should say, so that they are properly written in scientific notation. Okay, go ahead and take some time, work it out. All right, if you recall, scientific notation is where you have a leading factor, which we call C. That leading factor has to be a number between one and 10. When I'm looking at these, is that a number between 1 and 10? Yes, it is. Is that? No, it is not. Is this one? No, it is not. Is this one? Yes, it is. So I can already tell you the two that I've highlighted are going to have to be fixed. Uh, the second part is that 10 is written to the nth power, which is an exponent that is an integer, and all of these have integer exponents, so all the powers of 10 are fine. It's the leading factor, the C, where we have to fix for those two. So this is definitely, that is a number written in scientific notation, and this is definitely okay. That's a number, but this is not, and this is not. So the next step is to fix these. So if I start with B, if we take 789,000 times 10 to the fifth, 10 to the fifth is 100,000. So when you multiply this times 10 to the fifth, you got to move the decimal five places to the right. So it becomes 778, no, I'm sorry, yeah, 78,900. Now, to change that, we're going to identify what place, and maybe I'll just underline it here. Underline this place. What place is the seven in? That's in the 10,000s place. 10,000 
has four zeros. This is 7.89 times 10,000, so it's 7.89 times 10 to the fourth power. This would be the appropriate way to write this number, this number, in scientific notation. That was wrong. This is correct. The leading factors between 1 and 10, that's a power of 10 raised to an exponent that is an integer. Now let's take this one. 31.5 times 10 to the second is 35, or 31.5 times 100 which is 3,150. So when we identify the leading digit, that's a three, that's in the thousands place. So that's gonna become three point, oh no, that's 3.15. Forgot the, the, the one there. 3.15 times 1,000, and 1,000 has three zeros, so that's gonna be 10 to the third power. So this is the appropriate way to write that number. All right. Now, we are going to start working with some uh, basic multiplication. We're going to simplify expressions that employ the, um, the product of powers property, right? Same base. We're going to add the exponents together, correct? So we're going to use that for negative exponents, but we're also going to show it how we can change it to a, a fraction and use our understanding of giant ones and the quotient of powers property to get same answer. So please start by copying these three down. And then I'm going to work this one out with you. And then I'm going to pause and let you um, those two. Okay. So pause for a second just to copy these down. And then uh, I'm just going to keep going and, and you can unpause and catch up with me. So we're going to start with the idea that if we were to take six to the fifth power times six to the negative third power, Remember our exponent rules for negative exponents. If you take the reciprocal of your base and then apply the positive exponent, this would be one over six to the third. So now you're multiplying six to the fifth times one over six to the third. Numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator becomes six to the fifth over six to the third. Okay, so notice how this problem has changed basically from a multiplication problem to a division problem but we're now dividing with positive exponents. So if we expand that out, six times six times six times six times six in the numerator, and six times six times six in the denominator, and then search for our giant one to cancel out the common factors, what are you left with? You're left with six to the second power. So that is the answer to this problem. Now let's go back and, and think about our original rule for multiplying powers together. When you are multiplying two powers that have the same base, you keep your base and you add your exponents. So 5 plus negative 3 is 2. So whether we choose to rewrite this as an expression with only positive exponents and then dealing with the division problem or stick with our original rule for adding the exponents together when you're multiplying two powers that have the same base, both of them get you to the exact same answer. 6 squared, which if you wanted to, you could say 36 if you wanted to put it in the standard form, but we'll just leave it as a power, okay? So work through this process here and here to get to your answers. Okay? So show it one time as a multiplication problem where you've changed this to a positive exponent, expand it out, cancel out all the common factors, and then declare your answer, and then show it again where you're multiplying powers and adding the bases. All right, let's see how you did. So this would become y to the fifth over one times one over y to the positive second power. Remember, take the base, write it as its exponent or as its reciprocal, and then change the negative exponent to the positive exponent. Okay. Um, there's a story I used to tell students, by the way, which I'm I'm not going to do here because it's a big convoluted story. We don't really have time for it, but I I kind of treat. Um, let me just do this. Treat this problem like it's a fraction. And anything that has a positive exponent loves where it lives, and it's going to stay there. Whatever has a negative exponent is having a negative experience, and it chooses to move across the street, which it prefers. So think of the fraction bar as a street. Anytime you've got an expression with negative exponents, if you draw a fraction bar in there and you take anything with a negative exponent and move that entire power across the street, 
it changes to a positive exponent on the other side of the street or on the other side of the uh, fraction box. There you go, a much, much shorter version of the story, but it works. It's like a little short kind of a trick. So now that you've got y to the fifth on the top and y squared on the bottom, you can expand those out and cancel out the common factors. And that ends up giving you, when I say y, I meant w. w to the fifth, w to the second becomes w to the third. Why? Because w to the fifth times w to the negative second is w to the five minus, or plus negative two power. And five plus a negative two is equal to three. Okay, let's try it with this one. Uh, this guy, once again, let's think about moving these guys across the street. The 10 to the 5th likes where it lives, but the 10 to the negative 4th doesn't. So when you move that across the street, it's going to become 10 to the 5th over 10 to the positive 4th. Okay? So remember, negative exponents. Write that as its reciprocal and then change that to its opposite. So it becomes 1 over 10 to the 4th. So now you expand them out, cancel out the common factors, and what are you left with? Just a 10 to the first power. So once again, 10 to the negative fourth times 10 to the positive fifth. You're going to keep your base and you're going to add your exponents. Negative 4 plus 5 is equal to 1. 10 to the first is equal to 10. And I think, no, now let's do it again. Let's do it in reverse order now, okay? So let's um, copy these down. Now I'll show you the first one. All right, pop, uh, pause for a second, copy these down, and then I'll work through A with you, and then you can do B and C again. I'm even going to pause, too. So I'm going to take a little break. Okay, so what are we going to do here? We are going to take and expand those guys out, correct? So 6 to the 3rd is 6 times 6 times 6, and 6 to the 5th is 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 times 6. Now, when you cancel out all the common factors, all those giant ones, Everything from the numerator gets canceled out. But if you recall from our days of simplifying fractions, if you had like uh, 2 over 8, that would be the same as 1 over 4. And if you expanded this out to be 2 over 2 times 2 times 2, those are supposed to be all 2s there, then they would cancel out, but you'd still have the 1 in the numerator, right? So we do the same thing here. And you end up with 1 over 6 to the second power. And if we were to show this as a division problem, right, this is the quotient of powers property where you're dividing powers with the same base. You're going to do a subtraction. You're going to subtract the lower exponent from the upper exponent. So it becomes 3 minus 5 is equal to negative 2. Notice those two are exactly the same. This is the reciprocal of 6, and uh, 6 to the negative second power. Basically, you can uh, use the same rule where if you wanted to go across the street, if you're already in a positive area and you move across the street, it's going to change to its opposite, which would change to negative. This ends up being 6 to the negative second power if we write our power with a negative exponent. If you chose to write it with a positive exponent, you would leave it like this. So either one of those are acceptable answers. You just follow whatever the uh, directions told you to do. And in this case, we wanted it as a negative exponent, so we'll declare 6 to the negative second power. Okay? Go ahead and do B and C, and uh, then I'll reveal our answers. All right, so to do it literally, we are going to expand M to the power in the numerator and m to the sixth power in the denominator and we would cancel out five of the m's across the top and five out of the six across the bottom. So in a situation like this, there's a short question that I like to ask. Do you have more m's being multiplied repeatedly across the top or across the bottom? And your answer is there's more across the bottom, right? And my next question is how many more are there across the bottom? And you'd say one more. So that leaves us with 1 over m to the first power or m to the negative first power. How do you get m to the negative first power? Because we would use our quotient of powers property and say m to the 5 minus 6 power is equal to m to the negative first power. So these two 
mean the exact same thing. You can either declare your answer with a positive exponent or like this with a negative exponent. And in our last example, 10 squared over 10 to the fifth. Can you just predict what the answer is going to be? You got more of them in the denominator, right? And so if you take 2 minus 5, that's going to give you negative 3. So this is going to be 10 to the negative third. Why? Expand them out, cancel out the common factors, leaves you with 1 over 10 to the third, or 2 minus 5 equals negative 3, 10 to the negative third. These are equivalent to each other. I think that is where we end it today. Those two last ones are for an assessment, which we might do, but I don't think we're going to do that one. All right, let's move on. Take care. Bye. Hey, feeling good, like I should. When in circle, walk around the neighborhood, feeling blessed.